1919, Ford installed a battery and generator on the Model T, and this made electric start and better lighting possible. But if you have an original 6-volt generator and battery on your old car, like I have on this Model T, then it's important you understand how it works, how to set up and maintain it, and how to monitor it while you're driving. In this video series, we're going to explore the simple yet sometimes counterintuitive 6-volt generator system on the Model T. Of course, the system on the Model A is very similar, just with reverse polarity. Hi, I'm Steven from Fliver Channel. When I started learning about the Model T 6-volt generator system, I found it a bit perplexing. It's quite different than a modern alternator system. The original generator is a third brush type, direct current generator. Essentially, it tries to generate sufficient voltage to push a preset current to the load, whether that be charging the battery, powering the lights, or both. It's a constant current device. So for a given engine RPM, it will build up more and more voltage until it reaches the preset current delivery. This video explains how it works and how to keep an eye on it to avoid problems. Prior to 1919, the Model T did not have a battery nor a generator. It exclusively relied on its magneto for ignition and lights. Of course, the really old T's had gas lights, but still needed the magneto for the ignition system. When a battery and generator were added, electric start became possible. This video deals with the original Ford 6-volt generator, cutout, and dashboard ammeter. Modern alternators, solid-state voltage regulators, and diode cutouts are available for the Model T, but are not the topic of this video. The current setting is controlled by the clock position of the third brush. Most Model T owners set it between 4 and 12 amps. If the generator is turning and generating electricity, it needs to be connected to a load to dump the energy in this case, the battery. The generator cutout ensures that the battery is isolated from the generator when the generator is not uh, generating. And it connects the generator to the battery when it is to charge the battery. So when the generator is spinning fast enough to generate about 6.5 volts, the cutout contacts close and energy flows to the battery in any loads. The cutout also disconnects the generator from the battery when the generator is not generating electricity, like at slow idle or when the engine is stopped. The generator must be disconnected from the battery to avoid quickly draining down the battery and possibly damaging the generator. The dashboard ammeter indicates charge to the right and discharge to the left. So if the needle deflects to the right, the cutout has closed to connect the generator to the battery and the generator is charging the battery. If the needle deflects to the left, then the net load on the system is sufficient to drain the battery. Note that I said net load. If the generator is producing, say, 7 amps, and the lights draw 8 amps, then the net load is 1 amp of discharge. When the engine is off and the lights are off, the ammeter should read zero. Turning the lights on will show a discharge from the battery of a few amps. When the generator and cutout are working properly, at moderate engine speed and the lights off, the ammeter will read between 4 and 12 amps depending on where the third brush is set. This indicates that the battery is being charged by the generator. Turning on the lights will drop the ammeter reading by a few amps depending on the type of light bulbs you use. In our case, the third brush is set to provide about 7 amps at moderate engine speed. Our lights draw about 8 amps, so with the lights off, we charge the battery at about 7 amps. With the lights on, we slowly drain the battery. This is a reasonable compromise for our driving patterns where we almost never drive after sunset. Fliver Channel has an entire video showing how to adjust the third brush and discussing the choices and trade-offs that can be considered when deciding where to set it. Note that there is no voltage regulator. The Model T operates on a current regulated system instead. Setting the third brush in the generator and having a properly functioning cutout are essential to avoid overcharging the battery or draining it dead. Both are bad. The cutout can be bench tested, serviced, and adjusted to cut out at the correct voltage. 
there is a Fliver Channel video focused on testing and adjusting the cutout. The generator system on the Model T is very simple, but it must be monitored to detect problems before they become serious. Maintenance and adjustment of the system is necessary for proper function and reliability, and knowing how to read the ammeter for signs of trouble is essential.